Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Robin. For we are bringing in this prayer right now as we go into a time of meditation and contemplation. You know, here today, we're here to connect and connect with one another and connect with that higher power. As we do, I want to read a little transformational quote and then we'll move into silence. It's impossible, says pride. It's risky, says experience. It's pointless, says reason. Give it a try, whispers the heart. So we're going to connect with our hearts this moment. I invite you to take a deep cleansing breath in and release. And as you do, come to this place of peace. Moving beyond any cares of the day, any concerns or issues, be here now. Give it a try, whispers the heart. It's in this place that we remember that God is like a an underground water stream that can move through any dam that cannot be stopped. That's what Meister Eckhart, the great German theologian, said. It's in this stream that the water moves and flows and ebbs and begins to open and expand and open and expand, and that is happening within you right now an opening, an expansion, moving through anything that would block this time of experiencing God presence. So as we go into this quiet, let's bring with us the word of the day that's compassion. Remembering that you and I are one with all with all that there is, all humanity, all thoughts, all behaviors, everything. And as we come into silence, we bring that allness with us and love it, (coughs) healing whatever needs to be healed, allowing what needs to be allowed, feeling a presence of love. And for this we say, thank you, God. I am one with all humanity. It's in this place of oneness I experience my freedom and I defy anything to hold me down. I know God is a presence moving within me, so say within yourself, I am defying all gravity. I am one with God presence. I'm an underground river flowing I am that I am. 
And as you are filled up with that power and that strength and that faith, gently open your eyes and begin to come back to this place and to this time to one another and look around the room and feel one another's presence and one power. Know you are connecting with that which is greater than you in this world. So it is. Amen. Well, hello. Good morning. Again. Look who is here. I think I've seen you somewhere today. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. Ah, well, good morning. And as we prepare to talk about connect.org, I want to get ready. So I have my phone, and I can take pictures of you if I want to. <laughs> or I can do a selfie with you if I want to, you know. But anyway, and then I have my MP3 player so I can record what's happening. And then I have my iPad so I know what I'm talking about, hopefully. Uh, and it just goes on and on. And, you know, we want to thank, first of all, uh, each and every person here... Excuse me, I'm sorry, I have to take this. This is my wife. Uh, Hello? Uh, honey, am I disturbing your message? Uh, yes. I, I was going to leave just a little quick, quick reminder. Don't forget on connect.org to talk about Facebook and Pinterest and Google+. Okay, well, I don't understand why you didn't just tweet me. Well, honey, it's tweet you. You, you post tweets on Twitter. But it's called Twitter, honey. It is Twitter. You, you post tweets on Twitter. That's all. Okay, well, I'll, okay. I'll be sure and tell them. Oh, okay, bye. So just tweet me the next time, okay? Thank you. Um, I don't understand why they call Twitter Twitter. And one of these days I'll get used to that and even start maybe using it. Um, but, you know, um, one of the things we did want to do as I, start, as I was rudely interrupted uh, is uh, <laughs> that we wanted to... We wanted to thank each and every person here, but we especially want to thank the call committee. You have a great call committee. I want you to know that. You do. And <clears throat> they wrote an out, a package, if you would, is what we call it, a document that said who we are. And we've come here, and it is true. They read, wrote from their hearts, it was beautiful. They have treated us beautifully. They have been in touch with us. They have called. They have made sure we have everything that we want and we need. And uh, we just can't appreciate that enough. We met with your board yesterday, and uh, that was a, a thrill. Uh, and we had an open and uh, frank discussion, and we appreciated that opportunity to be authentic and, and just to share with one another from the heart. And so we are so thankful to be here, and we're especially thankful that you're here. Because if you weren't here, we wouldn't be here, OK? Um, so this morning, I do want to talk about this concept of high-tech, high-touch. And one of the things we were doing while we were preparing for this, if you go to the next slide, is uh, we were in a coffee shop. And uh, Vicki, we were just finishing up our monthly walk. And, um, <laughs> and anyway, we noticed something in the shop. So I, I didn't have my phone with me. So I asked the guy, one of those guys, if I could borrow his phone. And so we took a picture of the fellow you can see on the cell phone, okay? That's a high-tech guy who is connecting, but may or may not be at the heart level. And I did get permission to use these. And then here are the other guys sitting there, and this is what they're doing. They're just having a great time. Now, which one would you rather be sitting with? Well, the truth is, sometimes I want to be the high-tech guy because I want to be alone. But at the same time, I want to be with friends, and we want to connect heart-to-heart. And so as we look at this idea of high-tech, high-touch, um, we look at it from the standpoint that we want to connect through all kinds of gadgets. And I love gadgets. You can already tell that, okay? Uh, I can't even find half of them that I have sometimes to use because there's so many of them. And, and for example, I got my Fitbit on this morning. Okay? Yeah. In case my pulse gets too high, I'll calm down a little bit, and uh, I know that. And uh, so anyway, we have all these things. But you know, one of the things is that we have to understand we are in the world of mass communicating. A lot of you probably saw the movie, Oh God, How Art There? And there was this governor in there, southern governor, of course, and he was getting ready to go out and campaign. You know, a group of people watching him, kind of like they wanted to meet him, and uh, his son, who was his campaign aide, said, 
Pappy, aren't you going to go press the flesh? Aren't you going to talk to those people, shake their hands? And Pappy, the governor says, you know what? We ain't one a time in here. We're mass communicating here. And that's what we think we're doing sometimes is mass communicating. When he finally started one a timing, he ended up getting elected because he had to connect with people. And you and I are the same way. John Nesbitt wrote a great book in 1981. I was fortunate enough to uh, be in his company for a couple of days in the 80s. And he talked about, in his book, Megatrends, 10 common things that corporations and individuals are going to go through. And one of those was high tech, high touch. And he said that we live in a world of forced technology. Forced technology is like having a telephone at home and having a cell phone. Someday you won't have a phone at home. It won't be available, right? Remember the floppy disk? Some do. And now nobody has a floppy disk. So forced technology is what you have to use to move ahead. And it's forced on us by corporations, and I'm not, that's not a complaint at all, I love it, and by the growth of people and the growth of ideas and creativity. And so we have to get used to that, and at the same time we have to adapt to it. Because what Nesbitt said is that the more high technology around us, the more the need for human touch. And that's what unity is all about, human touch. And we can't forget that. We must, however, not allow high tech to control us. We need to control it. And yet we need it. There are some awesome opportunities in ministry today to use high tech. Live streaming, classes where somebody can be 20, 30 miles away and be in class with a group of people right here and it be interactive and live. We have that capability today. We're doing some of that. And it's really exciting. At the Unity level, at the Unity Worldwide Ministries, we're working on a whole educational program of high tech and high touch. And we're doing it by the idea that we're going to have online classes in every course that we have where there's really interaction and where you know the teacher and the teacher knows you. So we're moving in that directory rapidly. There was a study that was done a while back of churches. And they did the study because they thought that what they were going to find out is that most churches had and lost membership because of doctrinal disputes or individual disputes or whatever. And the study said that people left churches because they felt that the church was cold and was impersonal. Now, standing out in that hallway and being in here, I know you're not. But that's one of the things that we have in the beauty of the unity ministry is that we have the warmth, we have the high touch. And so what we want to do is learn how to be heart-centered, to to touch each other at the heart level, to treat one another in a way that it makes a difference, in a way that we come to understand that what we talk about, we are, that we model the expression of love. And I'm talking about unconditional love. All of us have experienced conditional love. And none of us have experienced unconditional love. Hi. Hi. So, uh, so I was thinking there was going to be a great little video coming right about now. It's not quite here. Not quite You're here? You're a little early. Okay, so I'll but just stand up here. what we'll do is move to it in just a second, okay? okay? Right. And so what we wanted to show to you is that, that high tech isn't everything. And so, David, if you'd run that video, we would appreciate that. Emma. Huh? Emma. Not Emma. Every day it's getting all my nerves. Emma. Oh, I'm Emma. Emma. great, isn't it? Just to see that there is a way of communicating and it's really well done. Emma did it. So, um, yeah, Richard's really setting it out how in our spiritual communities now, we do need to have high tech. 
We're social networking in so many different ways. And I'm here to take a stand for high touch. I'm taking a stand for there being a pent-up desire in each of us that when we come into the spiritual community, that there is a heart connection, as Richard spoke to. It's in this place that you and I want to come back. We want to be sure that we see one another week after week after week, and we find we develop a way to be church family and to be family of the heart. Now, when Richard, I'll tell a story about him, when he was going into ministry in Unity El Paso, he went to our my brother-in-law, John, Baptist minister, very successful in the Baptist World Alliance, a leader in his field. And Richard said, so what is the secret to having a successful church? And John said, no matter what's going on, no matter who said what or what's happened, love each other. Love one another through any baggage, through any anguish, through any loss or pain. Love one another and celebrate with one another. But no matter what, it is that amount of love that makes a successful community. It's how we treat one another. It's a heart-centeredness knowing that it makes the difference when we treat one another with love, no longer isolated from each other. So high technology, very important to open that window so people can see in, see what we're doing. We can see others, what they're doing, and it's a real sharing and growth in this century. Now when we get down to love, you know where to go. It's in that chapter, that chapter on love in 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. See, we, there's this essential quality like to a recipe. The essential quality for all spiritual communities is love. Now you ask why is this love so important when we've got great things going and great programs? goals and objectives? Well, all of the programs and the goals and objectives and things that we do are for naught if we don't weave in that ingredient of love. We won't thrive without it. We won't feel that connection heart to heart. And we won't be what we want to be in our unity movement we need the glue for harmonious relationships. When you and I decide to be this presence of love, and it is a decision, I choose love today, we're just making that extra little effort to stand in this presence, and it's a feeling that goes beyond words. It's something when we see one another and we get it. It's that presence that we call being in God mind. We're fishes in the sea and we are in it and it is around us and it is us. I want to tell you a little story about a man named Ira Gillette. He was a medical missionary to East Africa. And he, when he reported, reported back to the States after his time there in Africa, he said, you know, I noticed a phenomenon. 
it was interesting that the villagers all walked by the government medical compound and they came to this, the mission compound where we were handing out medicine. He said, and they had to go extra miles in order to receive medicine from the mission. So he asked them one day, well, why? Why, why, why would you want to walk those extra miles? And the response was this. The medicine may be the same, but the hands are different. That's the ingredient. That's the way it works in spiritual communities where we know maybe the message is the same. There's only God presence. There's only one presence and one power that's God. But when we have that ability to bring love, bring the hands and the heart to all that we do and all that we plan, we know that we have come back to a different place. Our hands are different, same medicine. You know, our, our high tech is creating, uh, creating situations where we're moving so quickly in our society. So I'm just going to end with saying, let's focus on taking a stand for maintaining this heartfelt connection. It is transformative. So love is essential, as Paul said. Love is also unmistakable. You feel it, you experience it, because love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It is unmistakable. You see love in action. When a person shows up there, when we show up that way, people know that there's a difference. That's what we call the light in each of us when it shows up that way. And so even though it is not definable, again, it is unmistakable. It is part of the environment that we set in. It is part of the environment of intention that we do together as we learn to love one another, but more importantly, to love the person at Walmart also. So... <clears throat> an example of this is, is really, and I know there are a lot here who probably have examples, but at Unity of Richmond, one example was that uh, we had a, a young man who became a member of our church. He was about 30 years old. He's a great young man. And uh, he was a recovering alcoholic. And this young man, and we'll just call him Dan. Dan was a fellow who uh, had been out in recovery for about six or seven years. And he had a relationship that fell apart. And unbeknownst to us, he started to go home in the evening and started drinking again. One of the things that happened to Dan is when he drank, he had blackouts. And in this blackout, what would happen is that he would not know where he was or where he was driving. And so he woke up after he'd been in that kind of situation in a county jail because that evening he had driven away and in his car had the blackout and he sideswiped a person he didn't even know about. Now he didn't hit the person, he hit a car. And nobody was hurt except from the trauma of it. And so a few days after that, we didn't know anything about it. Of course, he came and talked to us and he said, what do I do? Where do I turn? And so I called up another young man who's about 40 years old. And this fellow, let's just call him John. John was a recovering alcoholic, and he'd been in, R, in uh, AA for probably about 13 or 14 years. And just to share with you, even though he had been through the recovery and the alcohol and drugs and addiction weren't a problem for him, he still struggled with what he called his demons. He struggled with some of his past, and why did it happen to him? He still felt like a victim at times. But he was a great guy when it came to helping people in recovery. And I had heard that. So I called John up and said, John, would you meet with Dan? Would you come to get to know him? And so what happened is they got to know each other. And two wonderful things happened. Dan ended up spending three months in jail. 
But John was with him through that whole experience. He went to court with him. He loved him. We loved Dan as a community. We didn't judge him. Instead, we unconditionally loved who he was. And he felt that. He came out of jail and came back. And he's an active part of our community. But what happened to John? It was amazing. Because of his relationship with Dan, he started to appreciate who he was and what he was. And he no longer had that demon. He was able to transform his life because he helped somebody transform their lives. That's unconditional love in action. It works, and we all know it works because we've had it happen to each of us in some way. The second thing and the third thing is that we talk about love being essential and unmistakable. Love is expressing, and that was an example of that. Because, you see, love never ends. Love is always possible. And Paul says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, fully, even as I've seen fully known. And now faith and hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. God is love. Verse John says that. Jesus said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. And when you do that, you know what happens? You become an expression of that. You become the light of love. And it makes a difference because it transforms the world. When you raise your consciousness just a little bit, the world's consciousness raises. So you and I make a difference individually and collectively. So what I'd like to do is have you just feel this this sense of love this morning, this sense of connection. But to do so, I want to introduce a video uh, of John Nash. It's the beautiful man. And it was when he received the Nobel Peace Prize uh, for uh, economics. And John Nash had delusions in his life that controlled him. He had all kinds of issues. He spent time in a mental institution. But this is his message when he received the Nobel Prize prize for economics. I've always believed in numbers, in the equations and logics that lead to reason. But after a lifetime of such pursuits, I ask, what truly is logic? Who decides reason? My quest has taken me through the physical, the metaphysical, the delusional, and back. And I have made the most important discovery of my career. The most important discovery of my life. It is only in the mysterious equations of love that any logical reasons can be found. I'm only here tonight because of you. You are the reason I am. You are all my reasons. I hope that we can connect together just briefly with some affirmations. I want you to say them with heart, with gusto, as though they are the truth and it is the truth of who you are. I will say it and have you repeat it. God is love, I am loving. Together? God is love, I am loving. God is wisdom, I am wise. God is compassion, and I am compassionate. God is compassion, and I am compassionate. 
God is light. I am shining brightly. God is expression, I am spirit. God is power, I am powerful. And so at this moment, you've had that opportunity just to connect through the power of words at the heart level. So what we wish for you, whether we come here or not, and we would love to come here, is that you connect, always connect with each other that you be the connection of the heart. And as you do so, your heyday is in front of you. God bless and thank you.